Hey guys, and welcome to part two of how to paint a Blight King. All right, so it's been a while, uh, over a week now, and uh, we're here with um, this little guy. And uh, in the previous video, we established the base tones for the skin, and he's looking pretty cool. But now in this one, we're gonna be looking at uh, glazing. So uh, creating extra colors, shadows, um, and basically uh, making this skin more vibrant and interesting. And uh, this is like, I guess, not necessarily complex, but it's quite involved. Um, where we're gonna need to do a few things in order to uh, achieve this result. And um, so as you can see, the, the number of paints in front of me has uh, um, grown slightly. And um, it's gonna, yeah, just in, be a bit more involved, but not, not difficult, just a few more steps. So one of those steps is that before we move into glazing the flesh, we actually need to establish what all the little guts and you know pustules and, and uh, wounds in this flesh, what that actually is gonna be um, before we go and finish the skin, because um, all those glazes that we put on are gonna, are gonna interact with those areas and we don't wanna have them uh, underdone. Um, part of when you're painting, um, as opposed to a tutorial, is that you generally do paint you know, more of the model as you go rather than sort of one whole area to completion and then the next bit, one whole area, you don't really do that. What you do is you'll paint a lot of base colors on a lot of areas of the model. So you can see how all of the colors interact um, overall. So that's part of the, um, the process that we're gonna go through today. Um, so um, to begin with, before we move on to the flesh, we're gonna look at those, those pustules, the, um, you know, the guts and, and so on, and, and figure out what sort of colors we're gonna use. So um, yeah, let's take a look. Um, what I feel is gonna work really well here is um, probably purples to begin with, and we're gonna build that up um, through, in, in this case, with the flesh, we use the, the corpse pail, but uh, today we're gonna be probably using this toxic boils here, so something a little bit more pinkish and purplish um, to break it up from the, uh, uh, slightly more yellow tones or cream tones that are going on in, in the flesh. So just to give a, a variation. So we're gonna be using that. We've got our uh, Grimnar purple here and, and the corpse power for the skin for the later steps. We have our gray tone to uh, control saturation as before. And for those little areas that are in the broken skin, the pustules and so on, we're gonna introduce something with a bit more yellow in it. So we're gonna be using this Ashapti uh, bone to help build that up. So what I mean by that is all these little areas on the model here that um, have open, open wounds and so on, we're gonna do that with this slightly more yellowish tone to build up the, those colors. And then the purpley sort of color there, the deeper purple in, in the, that open area there in, in the belly, we're gonna use that. And that should uh, give us enough variations for when the glazing goes on. So just like this base tone in the skin, um, we're looking just to build some volume, uh, light and dark. Uh, and that's what we're really trying to accomplish. And, and once we've got that, we should be able to do the glazing and then do some final um, highlights on the skin. And we should end up with something really cool. And in these later steps, when we come onto the armor, which will be next, and the, the weapon and all the other little details, we may come back to the skin at a later stage. And that often happens um, when you're painting a model, when you see how things react, like I was saying before, you might want to then add um, you know, other colors to it. And we may very well do that. The final step uh, out of all of this will be all of the tarnish and dribbly bits, as I said before, uh, that Nurgle loves. And we're gonna be doing all those kinds of little things, um, you know, staining and, and um, you know, uh, weathering effects on the armor and, and, and the blade, uh, getting some of that probably rust or, or, or um, you know, um, oxidization going on across across all of this to just to tie everything together but you don't do that weathering in the early steps you leave it till the end because it makes it much easier to um, to paint the model so um, without you know further ado let's get into this and uh, we'll get that um, all those little pustules and uh, and the guts done all right so we're back and let's get started so the first step is to get your colors ready. So I've got on my palette here, the wet palette I've got, I've got the purple, the that's the darker one, and then the this Grimnar uh, purple we have, um, the Toxic Boils, the Ashapti Bone, the white, 
and a bit of the gray on the side if we need to control saturation. So we're gonna now um, come in with the base. So when we first did this, we used um, some of the Grimnar Purple and the uh, Corpse Bale with a bit of gray um, as, the, as the base tone, and that's what all of this color is in here, which is great. Um, but we wanna maybe just uh, go slightly darker and um, create a little bit, and that's just on this area here where the guts are. We're gonna grab a little bit of this purple here. So we're gonna bring across some of this this color and this darker purple. And like we've done before, create a bit of a gradation and have a look and see how these colors are interacting and find the color that we want. Um, you know, painting isn't always a precise, you know, textbook sort of mathematical thing. There's a lot of variation, a lot of um, opportunity for your own creativity to come out. So, um, you know, you just start putting these together and you start seeing how colors interact and, and how they work. And so we're probably looking for something like this possibly with a touch of the gray in there as well. So we'll see how that interacts. Wash your brush, you don't wanna to put too much gray in. And we'll just bring it across and just add a touch of that in, just to maybe desaturate slightly and come up with a nice dark purple that might work. So that's looking pretty good. So we might try that. So that's basically in terms of recipe, we we're probably looking at a 50-50 or a, you know, maybe 80-20 mix with a little you know, tiny percent of, um, of gray in there. And that's what we get. So we don't need much water for this because the brush was already wet. So we'll just mix that up and get ourselves a nice um, bit of color there. Let's check it. Twirl your brush to get the, the point on it. And I'm using, uh, I'd say something like a, this is I think a, a two, a two brush or a one. You can see that it's, you know, pretty average size um, for this type of step. You don't need anything too fine. If you're feeling a little bit, um, I guess, intimidated, then obviously use a smaller brush so it's easier to, to get into these little areas. And um, let's have a go. So we're just gonna put this down. This is sort of basically a, a, a base coat. Um, it's not, we're not sort of, um, I guess, uh, highlighting edges or anything. We're just painting it all across that surface. Now this little drip here, we'll just paint this in the purple as well, just to give it a color. But that's probably gonna change color later on in the process. But we'll just give it that color just to start with so we have something on it. So this is looking pretty good. So we'll just base that up. So I'm gonna go through and do that. Um, and then I'll come back in a sec. All right, so while that's drying, let's consider the rest of it. So I think we're gonna move up into a sort of cream white that, that, that's using the Shakti bone. Um, but we just wanna establish maybe a little bit more, I guess, reddish tone. So we'll use some of this Grimnar purple we have and just bring it across. And we're just gonna maybe just add a little bit of this in, touch of water, just so we can um, get a bit more color into there before we put the, the lighter sh uh, shades on. Focusing mostly around the edge where the the purple will meet the, the skin. So we start building up. It's very thin. We don't need um, like super thick paint here. Um, we wanna keep some of the lighter stuff that's going on inside here. And we're just building it up around, washing it in. Let me just make sure you don't have too much on the brush. And just give that a slightly deeper tone in, in all these little areas so that we have a little bit more color. We are gonna glaze these anyway, so we will end up with um, a deeper saturation going on, but it's always, you know, it's just a, I guess, um, a good practice just to build up colors when you see them and, and act, you know, and, and get it done right there and then so you don't have to come back so much later on. But you can already see now that's starting to give the, the difference there with the the contrast between the, the things that are going under the surface of the skin and the skin itself. Um, so I'm gonna go through and do all that. And then by that stage, the purple should be dry and we can move on to doing the, uh, the layering on, on the purple. And then finally, um, this sort of cream yellow uh, white color. And we'll also be um, attacking some of these boils and giving them a little bit of life as well. So um, we might even, let's just take a look while we're here. Let's just see what happens when we throw a little bit of this down uh, onto some of these. We'll see what sort of uh, color shift that gives. It might actually be cool to do this right now. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. All right, so in, in addition, <laughs> 
on the fly here, we'll just go through and give some of this Grimnar Purple a light glaze over all these little boils just to tie them in because um, they're probably going to end up having a lot of yellow in them and you know sort of pus type colors but uh, we may as well put a little bit of this red in there as well just to show the um, you know the the stress that's on the skin and the uh, the infection that's going on across there we can always change the color later if we if we don't like it but it'll just add a little bit more depth um, and save us some time all right I'll be back in a sec all right, so we've got that base Grimnar purple in all of those little spots and you can already see now it's really starting to, to lift. We're getting much more contrast now, which is great. So um, while that's drying, we're just gonna work on this purple. So we used a little bit of this here to, to create that darker tone. And now let's reestablish a little bit of that. So we'll bring this color together again and we'll create a little bit of that purplish tone with a bit of that gray. And now we want to lighten it up. So we'll grab a little bit of this toxic boils here and create a, a lighter tone. And most of this is going to all get, you know, um, we're going to have lots of different colors and little, little drips and stuff going everywhere. So um, yeah, we're just trying to get some light and dark. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, this is a Nurgle model after all, and we're trying to create that that gross look. So uh, especially in entrails and so on, we're not gonna see like huge amounts of like crisp definition. It, we just want little points of light uh, glistening off of this to, to make it make it feel cool. So um, we just start putting this slightly lighter tone on, just uh, dabbing it across the top, little tiny strokes, either dotting it or, or um, lining it, whatever looks cool. But you can vary it up a bit, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you've ever seen anything that's, um, so, you know, if you go to the butcher or you go to your supermarket and when you first buy meat and you take it out of the packet, you'll notice the way light hits it. Um, it has, you know, there's very bright little points of light across the surface. Um, you know, that's due to um, the wetness of it. And we're trying to create a little bit of that. So we, we, we can we can vary the surface a little bit and, and create some darks and lights in spots that maybe like on the skin here, that's just more of a dry surface. Um, we're seeing more of an even gradation of dark to light. But on these kind of areas, we can be a little bit more, um, I guess, punchy with those, those bright colors. Um, so we're just gonna put that across. And now we'll build a little bit more of this toxic uh, color into that purple where it's almost basically that color. So this is like a three-step process. And then we're just gonna, even while it's still wet, it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna dot in um, these colors across the, the top raised areas of those entrails, little lines and little streaks. Okay, and we're just building that color. Okay, and then maybe we'll go one more with a little bit of white in it. There we go. So we've got that three-step process. Twirl off the end of your brush, so you've got a point. And then we'll just dot in. Now this time we'll probably just do some little tiny streaks. Okay, to simulate the, I guess maybe the rib nature of this, this entrail. Maybe there's a little bit of undulation in it. Little tiny dots. Just dotting this up. And making it a little brighter so we can start to see it a bit more clearly against everything else okay and that's cool we're going to leave this uh, drip here as it's likely to change color by the end there's a little bit underneath here so we'll get a little bit of that okay and there we are. So we've now got, we've established some light and dark across that, which is really nice. Um, we might bring a little bit more of that mid-tone back in. So let's move back to this mid-tone here and just some of these darker spots here, just to give it a little bit more variation. And we'll just dot in a little more of that very lightly, just to lift the entire, that's just the underside there, just to lighten it slightly. It's hard to see on this camera, but it's um, it probably looks all dark, but um, that's just lifting that a little bit, bearing in mind to keep the, the lighter tone on top. That will just uh, lighten the whole thing a little. So there we go. And now we can work on um, 
I guess these cream white colors in all of these little open sores and bring some of that yellow into this. And so yellow, well, we're going to be using this bone here. So let's bring some of this across and we're going to add a little bit of that Grimnar purple into this and let's just have a look at it. Yeah, there we go. So we're sort of getting like a, a bruised skin or something like that. That's pretty good. So it's not really 50 50. It's probably, you know, only a small amount of that purple compared to the bone, but we're getting this kind of, um, yeah, sort of uh, bruised flesh color. And we're going to use that to start with and then build up to a little bit more of this, which is like an off bone. And then for the final highlight, we'll use basically all bone and maybe even a little bit of white added in for the final dots of light, um, as all of this is pretty much wet, right, under the surface. So we'll start with this sort of darker purple tone here. Build up a little more of that color now that we know what it looks like. Okay, so we have enough paint to work with. It's looking pretty good. And that's going to be definitely lighter than the other color that we already put on, as you can see. So now we're just trying to hit the middle sections of those areas, okay, and the tops, anything that's bumpy or raised, we're going to hit that. Um, and just all these inside areas, all the little boils that are on the outside of the skin, we're going to wait till we get to uh, this later stage and we'll add that, um, that yellowish tone on top. Probably it'll be just this um, uh, pure Ushapti bone, but we'll work on that in a second. So we're just going to start by just hitting, let's see if you can see that well, just hitting the middle areas of all of these. So now we're going to get that red or red purple in the grooves and this lighter tone in the center of some of these areas. So it's not necessary to do all of them, just the large ones where we can, where we can actually see in and see detail. Some of these very tiny ones you could leave dark, that's fine. Um, but all of these sort of really bright, or sorry, large ones where you're gonna see bright colors coming through, um, we wanna just add a bit of variation to that. So it looks cool. So I'm gonna go through and do that and I'll be back in a second. And there's the final result. So we can start to see some definition there. So now we move on to the, the mid-tone. So it's the same process. This layering process was the same for the flesh as it is for these areas. We're just using these same basic principles to create all the areas across the model. Um, and it, it's good to practice this. So uh, as I, I think I said at the beginning of, of this tutorial um, in part one, you know, this type of model, Nurgle model, is great for practicing all of this because you have these big, large, round forms and they're excellent for um, practicing all of these types of um, techniques. And so now we're going to, um, across this, we're going to do a little bit more of a dotting motion just to vary it up a little bit and create some, some differences across that. It's very hard to see on my, on my video, but um, uh, I assure you there's uh, some mottling going on. So it's little, little dabbing motions, and we're just going to concentrate on the, on the central areas, and this is going to give us some subtle variety. Um, we're talking about very minutia little areas, but um, you know, this is why we choose a Nurgle model. These kind of things are really fun to do and, and um, really improves your painting overall. You know, even if you're painting Space Marines or very clean sort of armor types like that or Tau or something, um, you know, or Elder, this, this, this kind of stuff is gonna help you to create really nice smooth transitions for your colors um, on, on models like that. Um, so I'm gonna go through and do that now on these larger areas. As I said, you could leave some of the other ones darker. It's perfectly fine. It doesn't all have to be exactly the same. This is a disease after all. It's not gonna have the same color everywhere, but just on some of these really large ones that we can see on the model. And now we're gonna go for the final stage of this little three-step process. And we're gonna use this Shapti bone uh, straight on. And we're gonna start putting some little dots of this into the centers here. So we're just gonna focus on, yeah, just very small little dotting motions and creating a little patchwork of these things just in the center to create a sort of really bright focus for this, this boil or this pustule. Okay, and then same for all of these little areas, we'll just highlight them up a little bit and create some little points of interest in them to help um, break it up and give us some tones to work with. So if we come back with some glazing, we're gonna see some variety. So we just point that out like that, very, very gently. And we'll start to see those little bright points. 
Okay, and then we're also going to come through and use it now on these little, on the outside boils, the little um, round dots that we see on the model, which are these sort of, I guess, full of pus, I would say. So that's going to start to yellow those up. So we're going to go and do the Oshapti bone, the highlights in the centers of these, um, the, the wounds underneath the skin, and the Oshapti bone on the tops on the boils um, or pustules on top of the skin. And then we'll come and uh, take a look at it and see how we're going. All right, so let's have a look. So you can see now we're starting to get some real life in this skin, all those yellows coming through, and it's starting to look really cool. We do have some like larger uh, spots here. So what we're gonna do is um, for those areas like this bigger circle here and, and some of these slightly bigger ones where we're seeing more definition, we're gonna add a little dot of um, just off-white. So we're just gonna add a little bit of this white next to the Ashapti and create this sort of just soft, soft uh, pale white tone. And we're just gonna twirl a brush, get a point on it. And we're just gonna dot some of this just on the raised areas to give us a little glint of, of light. Okay, and just do it in some of these little spots here. Uh, probably on this big one here. across the, the top of that little ridge. We're not lining it in, we're not um, creating like a very obvious line edge highlight like you would on let's say, um, I don't know, a Space Marine or something. We're just doing this sort of dotty pattern, uneven, you know, not, not, not getting uh, too precise with it, just hitting some of those top areas, giving us a few little moments of, of interest. Okay. Just on a few of them. It's looking pretty good. We might just tone back that one on the on the back here. So you can always come back with a little bit of your um, your Shapti bone and just hit that a little just to um, lessen that brightness there. It's a little hard to see her in this, in this video, but that's a little bit more subdued now. So there we go. We just have a few points of light hitting that, which is great. We can always come back and add more of this later, but this is just to give us a, a good base. Um, so this is where we're at with, with the, the flesh. And so the next steps now is glazing. So if you were new, uh, like I said in the previous um, tutorial, uh, you could actually stop right here and be very happy with this, this result. This would um, get you uh, on the table and playing. You know, you do up the rest of the, the armor and so on, and you'd be uh, fine with that. That's a, that's a good result. Um, but we want to go a little bit further than this. Um, we definitely want to add some highlights to the, the skin. And we also want to see some, some colors come in that aren't just purples and, and yellows. So we want to bring in um, some slightly variation colors and that's where the glazing techniques come in. So we're going to now move on to glazing and um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Okay, glazing the skin. So in front of me, we have some yellow here, this uh, uh, one from uh, Citadel, the shade. We've got also the, uh, the crimson here, this magenta. We've got um, this uh, violet here as well. And we have um, this uh, nightshade, which is a blue tone. And we're gonna use these, uh, these shades to help glaze the skin and give us some variety. Um, so usually when I start out, I'll usually go with uh, the crimson to start. So that's where we will begin. Um, and we'll uh, work from there. So um, get your palette ready and I'll be back in a second. All right, so we've got our colors out in front of us, the blue, the crimson, the, the purple, and the yellow, and we're gonna begin this process. So you might be thinking, uh, why isn't there any green here? Because green's another good color you could use. Um, the reason why we're holding off on the green um, is because we haven't actually even started on the armor yet. So we're gonna be doing a blue-green armor. So um, before we wanna maybe add some of that green into the skin to bring it across and give us a more harmonious finish um, for the more advanced of us out there that are following along. Um, 
we want to see how um, that reacts first. So we'll do the, the armor and then when we come back in with our little dribbly bits and so on on final details on the skin, we might then go and add some of the, the green um, into that and it might actually be a blue green rather than um, a straight up a green shade. So um, that might be one of those little fancy little end techniques we might do, but we don't want to add it in yet because it might clash too much or, or create too much of a um, just too much too much variety across the surface and um, we've already got a lot of boils and a lot of little details that we want to see so there is also the problem of adding too much detail to a model and we don't want to spend that long on, on, on any one piece we want to see the whole thing come together so we're going to leave out the green um, when we're shading the skin and bring it back in later and and whatever color you're choosing to the armor I would suggest the same so if your armor is going to be like a like a, a purple tone then I probably hold off on putting too much purple in the skin I might go for more crimson if if you're doing, um, you know, maybe a brownish armor or sort of, you know, bronzish armor, then maybe hold off on whatever the the stain or the, um, you know, the the damage is going to be on on that on that bronze area. You might so that might be yellows, for instance, or something like that. Then you might hold off putting too much yellow into the skin, just so we have a nice contrast. Remember, from the beginning, we're looking to contrast between the skin and the armor as as much as possible. If we add too much of those colors across each other. Um, it will muddy it all up and you'll just get like a wash and you're not going to be able to see the differences across the model. So um, to begin with, we're just going to use these. We add a bit of water to this. So when we're glazing, we're going to start with the red. Since we already have that on the model, we know that works. We're going to be using that. So, you know, it's sort of like a one to one, I guess, between water and this shade. It's quite thin. Glazing is, um, you know, uh, not like ink washing. We're going to be doing very, very thin layers. So maybe even an extra drop or two of water. So we want it almost transparent. And we're going to test that out on an area that doesn't matter so much. So we're going to start with somewhere underneath and just see how that interacts on the surface and see what kind of look it gets. And we're going to direct this into areas. We're not going to just wash it everywhere. We're going to look for shadows, um, little recesses, anything that, that feels like it should be a darker tone or maybe more reddish. So that could be around, you know, the, um, the edges of the wounds. So we'll start to just wash that in here because um, we want to still keep some of this yellowy uh, flesh tone that we already have. We're just trying to further accentuate it and give us a few varieties of colors um, across the surface. So in these grooves here, we might just throw a little bit of that in, run it into uh, the shadow areas in here and add a bit more redness. Okay. But this is because of how modeled the skin is, we don't have to use the same all over. We're just going to add a, a bit of red across the surface here in areas we think are cool and think look nice. And then we're going to move on and add in uh, some purples and yellows. So you don't need to necessarily hit the whole model, just the main areas that um, the focus, which so we're starting on the front, as you can see, and just move through and just add these little areas in. And uh, once we've done that, we'll move on to the next color. And there we have it. So now we've got just a little bit of that red glaze. You can see in places some of it's still wet. That's great. You can see how our tones that we, we put on are now giving us, you know, that glaze is now giving us some, some effects across the surface. It was all one color. You wouldn't get as much, but now we're starting to see some differences, some darker bruisey tones coming on underneath. Um, and this is giving us the, I guess, the, the groundwork for how we might highlight it later. So while this is even a little bit still wet in places, we're going to start, let's adding, let's do, do some blues now. So um, rather than the purples, let's see what happens when we add a little touch of blue in places. So lots of water mixed in with this um, shade. So nice, nice and, and transparent, not too much on the brush. Okay. We're not going to try to hit this too heavy. We're just going to start to um, bring in some of that. And I would suggest that for the blues, we want to do undersides. Okay. Underneath anywhere that's going to be deep in shadow or um, areas that are very, you know, rotund and you get this nice undercut, we're going to add those blues in. Okay. Where the, the, the flesh might be really starting to rot away and, and be quite um, nasty. So we're going to start by, we'll just see it on this pectoral here. So we'll get that into focus and we're just going to add some of this blue in, and this is going to introduce now um, a changing of the color. So we're going to start to see most likely a little bit of purple coming through. Okay. Possibly even some green in places. And we're just going to touch that in, even if you want to adding a little bit into, um, 
into some of those little boils if you like, that's fine. Um, and bringing it in, just adding a little touch in there possibly, maybe around some of those. And we're just gonna gently start adding a little subtle bit of blue, blue to purple coming through. Um, and this is really an aesthetic choice, but the main areas we're looking for is deep, uh, dark areas, areas that are sitting um, in much dark, darker, deeper recesses. And when you come across onto these flat areas, again, we're using this sort of dotting technique, or if you wanna do a little few little streaks, so you start to build up some of that texture across the skin again, and sort of simulate the, um, the, you know, the drips and so on er earlier in the stages of your skin, then by all means do it. There's no, there's no real, um, so we can, we, can, we can do a little bit of that just to show you. So you can start to simulate some of that. Maybe this is like, really dried underneath. And then we're gonna do our more wet layers of dripping and stuff um, over the top. So you could add a few little areas of texture like that. Um, that would look really cool. And just dot it in so that we get some nice variations. And we're just gonna start doing that. Don't overwork any one area. Just keep moving around and finding little spots that look cool to have a little bit of that blue purple coming in. Um, so I'm gonna go through and just do a bunch of areas here. You know, definitely under, under the arm here um, in some of these deeper fat rolls that he's got. You know, you wanna, you wanna add a little bit of that in um, and across the base of the feet where, you know, the blood's gonna be sitting and congealing, you know, in areas that aren't moving as much, you know, it's all gonna be settling down. So this is gonna be very dark here. Um, if you've ever seen The Walking Dead or any of those sort of shows that show zombies, you'll see that a lot of the the um, limbs and so on are darker and, and, and that sort of thing than some of the areas around the, the focal areas which are, which are lighter. That's also drawing your eye to the center as well. So these are all nice little tricks that you can do to help um, give your model more interest. So I'll go through and do that now and I'll come back to you in a second. All right, coming near to the end of the glazing process. So let's take a look. So now we're starting to see those darks coming in, those blues that are going to purples. Okay, getting some nice little variations in that skin. Again, this video is a little washed out, so it's a, a bit more vibrant on mine, a little bit more blue and a little bit darker in, in places. So these little areas uh, under the pectorals and so on are actually a little darker in, in, in my paint job, but you won't be able to sort of see that in this video. But um, don't worry if it's going darker, that's great. We want some nice contrast. And I've, I've packed it in under there, so we've got some nice dark um, blues underneath. And we're pretty much there. So in terms of other, other glazing, now I definitely want to add some yellows into this. So we're gonna, we're probably not gonna add much in the way of purple because I feel like this has plenty of purple in there and plenty of those colors. Um, so we'll probably leave off that purple. It's a very strong color um, and, and probably doesn't need to be added. But we just wanna add in um, a little bit of yellows in here, mostly around areas probably that are um, towards the top here. Some of these bright spots on the tops of the pectorals in these areas. We'll add a little bit of yellow in um, just to see how that interacts and give us some variety. And that's gonna give us a great base um, to do our final um, skin layer, which will be um, blending some of this in, some highlights just to really make it all pop. And um, like in one of my previous uh, tutorials on uh, Monster Flesh, we're gonna be tinting those highlights with these glazes. That's a whole nother layer of um, complexity, I guess. Um, so again, if you are new, you might stop here and just be happy with, with this level, um, but we're gonna go even further. So this is gonna be a long uh, tutorial series, I guess, on, on how to um, push your colors and, and, get, and get it as, um, as interesting as possible. So um, let's move into this yellow. Again, we're using the water into, the, into this yellow. We want it quite, um, quite soft. We don't wanna have too much going on here, just a little bit. And let's just um, begin on an area we don't have to worry too much about. We'll just come across to maybe this spot here and just see how this yellow interacts as we wash it in. Yeah, that's cool. So we're getting like little areas of um, flesh that are really starting to come away. And I would suggest they're gonna be on, as I said, on these top areas, maybe around some of these larger boils, okay, to further yellow, make those boils a bit more yellow. And in fact, I probably would do them on almost all of them. And that'll also um, uh, shift and saturate the, uh, that Grimnar purple that we have around the boil, which will um, give a bit more interest as well. So we're just gonna come through and start doing that. Let's have a look at the front. So this is our main area that we wanna see this in. So we might even glaze a little bit of that yellow 
uh, in and around this front boil here and some of these. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. And that's, that's further shifting the colors away and creating contrast between yellow and purple, which is what you want, right? So we're doing that double, that double contrast thing between the, um, the greens, blues, yellows, um, or oranges and, um, and purples. And so we might just add a little bit of that in on some of these top areas here. Okay, just blend it off. Um, and if you need to sort of wipe away, just clean your brush, okay? So it's like a damp brush and just feather that, that out and it'll, it'll soften the effect and you can, you can blend it uh, across almost like a wet blend. Um, and that, that's a helpful way of doing this when you're dealing with like these like soft little subtle glazes. You can just feather them out if you don't like where it's going. So we'll just add a little more of this yellow across the top here just to um, unify it slightly so it's not just um, in one spot. So we'll just add a little bit of yellowing happening there. And this, again, this is just a th aesthetic choice. You're just adding this kind of color into where you feel um, feels the best. So I'm just gonna go through and do a little bit some of these raised areas um, like I've been doing here, and then we'll come back to take one final look at it. All right, be back soon. And here we have it, our final beautiful big boy. He's all done with his yellows, blues, purples, magentas. Those yellows and blues are gonna to shift together and you're gonna see some green coming in, coming through, even though we haven't actually added it. You're gonna get some grays in there. You're gonna get some you know, dull tones. You're gonna to get bright color. Um, and this is you know, a great way to just uh, build some real nice, interesting things into your models, you know, colors um, without having to, you know, heavily blend and build up like solid um, color. You're just using these nice, soft, um, transparent layers. And so you really can't go wrong. You can just slowly build that up and just feather it in and create nice changes across the surface because we've built up that, that strong foundation of the, um, the color underneath for the skin. And so from here, um, that's where we're going to end uh, this section of the tutorial. And next time we come back, we're going to now leave the skin and we're not going to re-highlight. So we are going to come back in with a final highlight. Um, but we really need to see how the armor um, is affected uh, by the skin. And so the next stage of this will be to um, just hold uh, for one step on, on that final um, tinted highlight layer of, uh, of skin and come across and bring in the colors onto the armor. And we might even end up base painting the, uh, the ax there as well, just to see how this starts to feel. And we're gonna bring up the, the layering highlights on the armor um, and, and resolve that so that we can do our final highlights on the skin um, and, and see how that feels. All right, so I hope you've really enjoyed this and uh, follow along. It is a much more involved step to get to this point. Um, it is a bit of a longer tutorial uh, for this one, but I hope it's been um, you know, at least uh, interesting or educational um, and you've been able to use some of these techniques on your own models. Um, and if you are following along, I'll definitely see you on the next one. Um, but yeah, have a great day guys and I hope you enjoyed it. At the end, there'll be an overview that'll show the colors um, and a bit more of a close up uh, picture of this model and how it kind of looks. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.